Hey guys, welcome into my studio. In today's tutorial, we're gonna learn how to draw this clouded leopard. Um, however, in this one, we're gonna be using a lot more of my tattoo needles rather than my standard X-Acto knives or my slice tools. Um, so if you wanna learn how to do that, then stick around. Hey guys, like I said, in this one we're going to learn how to draw this clouded leopard. Um, in this video I'm going to show you a couple of little techniques um, that you can use your tattoo needles for and a couple of different things that you can do to your tattoo needles to get some different effects. I'm going to show you how I'll create this very, very bright white highlight and also how to create this really shadowed, um, deep looking fur along this guy's neck. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the video. So as I've said before, um, I, pretty, I think I've said it in pretty much every video, um, I like to look at my reference photo to see where I'm going to start my piece. Um, so for this one, um, it probably comes as no surprise, but I decided to start with the eye. Um, as you know, that's probably one of my favourite places to start. Um, I feel like if I get that area up to a good level of completion, it gives me um, something good to look at, I think, throughout the rest of the piece. Um, but it also helped that the eye, especially on this one, um, it's got quite a lot of white, bright fur around it. Um, so I also like to get one of the brightest areas in pretty quick in the drawing. Um, and then that way I can judge um, my other highlights and my other values of the fur around that. Um, the lightest area that you get in, it's not. you're then going to struggle really to get much brighter than that. So the it's normally the highlight in the pupil around the middle of the eye. Um, but for this guy, he had quite a lot of white fur around the eye. Um, so that also sort of competed with that brightest level of highlight, if that makes sense. Um, so you'll see quite a lot in this video, I use my tattoo needles um, rather than my slice tools or my X-Acto knives. Um, I do use them when it comes to adding those really, really bright highlights on this one. Um, but I found with this piece, the tattoo needles, they just gave me a bit of a, a bit more control. Um, this piece isn't particularly big, it's only five by seven. Um, so that's a relatively small piece. So what you find with the tattoo needles is they are quite small, they are quite precise, so you can get some very small details with them. Um, so I think that's why mainly in this piece, uh, I decided to go for them a little bit more. So in regards to the tattoo needles, um, I tend to use three. They, they tend to be my three most commonly used um, tattoo needles. Um, so I tend to, they're not really branded. Um, I get mine, I think they're unbranded anyway, um, off a company off Amazon. Um, they come in a pack of 50 um, and you get a number one, three, five, seven, and nine. And the actual needles are round liner needles. So you can get quite a few different um, styles of these needles. You can get them where they're quite flat. Um, so they almost look like if you were to spread your fingers um, out flat in front of you, they're quite, um, they're sort of just across one plane. Whereas the round liner needles, it's almost as if you bunch your fingers together. Um, I don't know if that quite makes sense. Um, but I'm also gonna pop a, a um, picture up in the top left-hand corner of the three um, tattoo needles that I use. So the one on the far left is the um, one needle so it's the as you can see there's very very thin point to it and um, the one in the middle is a five and the one on the far right is a nine so I tend to keep the one and the nine exactly how they are uh, when they come straight out of the packet however you probably notice the one in the middle looks a little bit frayed so what I tend to do is I'll get my exacto knife and I spread the needles a little bit and what that tends to get me is a little bit of variation in the fur. They're not so not so rigid. Um, they don't come out perfectly straight. So when I'm using that needle, it tends to give it a little bit of a messier look, but I tend to find that that messier look actually makes it look a little bit more realistic. And I don't tend to get rid of my tattoo needles very often. So when I find that one's gone a little bit blunt um, or I want to use a new tattoo needle, I tend to just 
pop it aside and keep it in sort of like a spare drawer and then if I ever need a needle and I, d I don't want to go too too bright I want to keep it quite subtle and the marks quite subtle I tend to get out these older needles that have been used a little bit so they're not as sharp so they won't give you as bright of a mark however they do serve a purpose to um, if you're ever struggling to get very very I say dark mark, but it's just a mark that's not as bright as what the other ones are. These these old tattoo needles and these old blades, um, they are very, very good. They still serve a purpose. So as, you, as you've probably seen in some of my other videos, um, I like to keep my fur strokes not very straight. Um, so especially my underneath fur, I'll tend to curve the lines um, just to give it a little bit more of a wavy texture. And I feel like it gives the, the animal a little bit more life. Um, you know, you don't want your animal looking like it should have been brushed, you know. I mean, obviously if you're doing a pet portrait, a dog or a cat, um, or any other type of pet that people may have, um, the fur may be a lot straighter because it probably has been brushed. Um, but this clouded leopard is something that would have been found in the wild, um, so the, the texture that you get in the fur will be a little bit more wavy, a little bit more messy. Now here, when I'm working on the nose, um, I'm using my single pointed tattoo needle, so the one round liner. Um, and what that allows me to do is get some very, very precise marks and some precise stippling. Um, so I can almost map out where these blemishes are in the nose and where the highlights are and where the darks are. And then that allows me to come back in with my X-Acto knife or my sliced tool um, and put those bright, bright marks in. But I've already planned out where those are going to be just by using this this round line of tattoo needle. Now some people find that these tattoo needles are quite hard to hold um, and to be honest they are um, they're very very thin um, so they can cause they can be a little bit uncomfortable when you're holding them um, so you can get other tools that hold these tattoo needles for you um, and I think they're called vice pin holders and I do have a couple myself um, I haven't really tested them out as of yet um, but you can get them to hold them for you if, if you're a little bit concerned about them being a bit too thin to hold. So as you can see I'm getting onto this very very bright fur now, the fur that's surrounding the eye. Um, so the way that I've had to tackle this is I first of all have gone in using my nine round liner. Um, reason for this is when I was looking at the reference photo I couldn't really see many shadows in that fur. There were some um, but they were quite light shadows. So this is what I mean when I say you've got to look at your reference photo to determine the type of fur that you're going to put in. Now if there was quite a lot of dark dark shadows beneath this white fur so if it was purely white fur with you know not a lot of depth to it I probably wouldn't have gone in with my tattoo needle to begin with. I probably would have just gone straight in with my slice tool or my exacto knife or, or whatever you want. However, there wasn't, like I say, very many shadows behind it. So what I wanted to do was take away as much of that black as possible. And the way that I've done that is by using the nine round liner. And this will lightly take off quite a lot of the black um, India ink and then you can go back in on top of that and then add those bright, bright white highlights. And if you were to compare that to, let's say, the fur on the nose, so if you look at the fur on the bridge of the nose, there's a few sort of dark marks still showing through and when I'm working on his cheek at the minute, there is quite a lot of black um, shadows in that fur compared to just above the eye. So for that I'm leaving more gaps in between my fur strokes and when I'm going in with my final highlights on top I'm making sure that I'm not covering up all the work that I've put in on those lower layers.
one thing I forgot to mention when I was doing the eye um, so again because it was a very very small area to work in I was using my one round liner um, and that just allowed me like I say to plan out where I'm putting those marks um, so that I don't go wildly wrong if that makes sense I want to try and keep the pupils in the right direction because on an animal such as this where it's looking off into the distance or it's looking off behind you and it's not looking directly at you if you get those pupils and it, because it's got you know you can see two eyes in the photo if one of those pupils is put in the wrong place or the highlight is put in the wrong place then it can make your your animal look a little bit cross-eyed if that makes sense So if you want to watch a little bit more about how I would go about creating an eye um, or the fur structure that surrounds an iris, then I do have a um, tutorial over on my YouTube channel. Um, so I'll put a link to that up in the top right corner now for you. And if you um, get a chance, go over, have a look at that. Um, the second part of the video focuses more on the fur, where it has the first part of the video focuses more on the actual eye. So again the way that I'm creating the fur on this animal isn't any different really to my squirrel tutorial or, or this eye tutorial that I've just linked you to. Um, I create quite light looking fur if that makes sense, quite um, not very bright looking fur um, when I'm doing my first initial layers. So those first initial layers are more often than not created using a tattoo needle um, and it just gives me a little bit of structure, a little bit of a direction to follow and then I slowly and slowly build up the brightness to a, a much higher level um, either by varying the pressure that I'm using with my tattoo needles or going in with you know one of my slice tools or exacto knives just to create those top highlights and those mid-tones as well so the way that I created the the white fur just at the bottom of the nose around the muzzle area it's the exact same as what I was talking about when I created the fur just above the eye so I looked on that muzzle area there was probably a little bit more shadow than what's above the eye so what I made sure to do was have a few more gaps really but especially once putting those top white highlights on I made sure that I didn't cover up completely you know the little spots where the whiskers are going to come out or the little areas of blemishing I want to sort of say um, otherwise if, if I completely cover up all of that I completely cover up all the hard work that I've put in with those lower layers so you'll see in a minute I start to work on the two ears for this leopard um, now I haven't shown you the reference photo for this one again because it is a bought reference photo um, the reference photo was purchased through wildlifereferencephotos.com and I find it it's a really good website for getting some very high quality royalty free photos um, so I'll pop a link in the description for that um, and then if you want to see how this animal looked on the reference photo then go over if you want to do it again and sort of like follow along with this tutorial then by all means go over and have a look at that reference photo and download it now this ear especially the one that's um, i'm working on now on the reference photo it's quite out of focus to be honest both of the ears are a little bit out of focus and i've actually gone wrong a little bit on the ear that's in place at the minute so I went a little bit too bright, so I feel like it stands out too much compared to the rest of the drawing. So what I had to do was go back in, you'll see once I finish um, on this right hand ear that I'm working on now, um, I'll go back in with a Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen um, and I've re-established some of the darks in that left ear. Because as you can probably tell from looking at the reference on my artwork right now, it's obviously a bit too bright compared to the rest of my drawing and it only really became apparent a little bit further on. So like I said, I had a couple of options really. Do I go back in and re-establish some of those darks um, or do I make everything around it a bit brighter? Now because it was such a 
small area I decided to go back in and make that area darker it would have been a lot more work to try and make everything even brighter surrounding it um, as well as going in with those pit artist markers what I also do and it's a tendency basically that I've picked up is I've got sometimes some dust from the board um, just on the tips of my gloves and um, as you can see on my left glove um, so what I'll do is I'll rub that over that light area and it can just knock that highlight back a bit so as you can probably tell now the highlight's gone down a little bit and it matches more it's more, a little bit more in keeping with the drawing um, so that's what I've done I've gone back in I've rubbed my finger over it a couple of times and I've re-established some of those shadow areas with that pit artist pen and it's okay you're going to make mistakes in a drawing um, very rarely do I actually complete a piece without making a form of mistaking or there's an area of the drawing that I've gone too bright or not bright enough with and I'm not quite happy with it um, but it's all part of the process So now I've come on to work on this guy's neck. So I've, most of the other part of the drawing was completed using old uh, tattoo needles. Tattoo needles that I've used in previous drawings, just because I wanted some really light marks. However, when I came onto this neck, I wanted it to be a lot more crisp. I wanted my lines to be a lot more precise. And I didn't want to keep going over the same part, which can happen if you're using a bit of an older tattoo needle that's not as blunt, that's not as sharp anymore. Um, you have to keep sometimes going re over that same area. And albeit that's great if you're looking to create depth, sometimes you just want to put a mark down and have it stay down. So I've used a brand new tattoo needle here. And because the fur is quite tightly packed, it, it doesn't tend to wave off. It's very, very short. Um, so I'm not looking at creating too much. Um, obvious depth in it. I am just going to create one or maybe two layers on this neck um, because I don't really want the neck to be too much of a focus. Um, I wanted the eye and the bright muzzle um, and the ears, they, those were what I was planning on making my focus. But what I'm making sure to do is to go into those black areas, so, so the black stripes in this clouded leopard it's the same as what I was talking about with the spots um, on a normal leopard or the stripes on a tiger these black areas aren't just jet black they do have fur in them they are black fur so you do have to make sure you go in and give a little bit of texture in those and the best way that I've found is if you get your reference photo up and just boost up either the contrast or the brightness or the exposure and you can sometimes see just the direction of the brightest black fur and then if you add in a couple of strokes here and there in those black areas it will give your piece a lot more depth and a bit more realism again using that slice tool just to create those sort of top highlights those mid-tones and those bright highlights you'll also see that I use those slice tools to create the whiskers just coming up in a minute um, and to be honest I found them amazing at creating that you can get if you're using a slightly different blade a blade with the curved edge you can create some really thick looking whiskers which is really good if you want to see sort of how I use the tattoo uh, the slice tools or how I how I found the the different blades that slice sent me I'll put a card up just in the top right um, for you to go and have a look at a video um, of my review and also of the squirrel tutorial that I've just completed because that was just completed using solely slice tools and no tattoo needles, no other tools. So we're coming to the end of this one now. Um, so I'll leave you just watching these last little uh, whiskers and little flyaway hairs being put in. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to check out some of the other videos on my channel. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.